Okay, so it says consider the circuit shown below. That's the circuit. And with the capacitor questions, you will see these switches built in. That's because the um, uh, presence of capacitor makes the circuit time dependent. And as a reminder, we are not dealing with the full time dependence right now. I've, I've deliberately put that aside and we will come back to that later. Sorry, one second, let me just mute that. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll come back to the full, fully time dependent RC circuits later, as we are doing the other time dependent elements. Um, what we are doing right now is really um, two different uh, moments in time. Uh, one is the kind of transient behavior, what happens to the circuit, the moment you close the switch. It looks like for this question, we are not getting that. We'll get that at the other questions. And the second, other behaviors, so what is sometimes called the asymptotic behavior. Um, asymptot asymptotic as in asymptot. Um, like if you have an exponential decay, it asymptotically reaches um, y equals zero. So. When, when you are looking at asymptotic behavior, what you are looking at is okay, what happens as time goes to infinity. So if, uh, and that's why it's saying after the circuit has been closed for a very long time, it's a keyword saying that we are just looking for the asymptotic behavior. Uh, so uh, this only works if a circuit reaches some kind of steady state eventually. And that'll usually be the case as long as you have a DC battery, so. Um, so that's the question we are dealing with here. Uh, in this, for this particular question, it's saying, okay, we are gonna close this switch and we are going to wait for a very long time for, um, for the circuit to come to some kind of an equilibrium or steady state. And once uh, it has done that, then what does that look like? Okay, and uh, in analyzing this uh, asymptotic behavior, you have a basic one tool to use in um, analyzing the circuit without dealing too much with the capacitors. And that tool or trick or whatever is you treat capacitors as open circuits or maybe <laughs> open circuit, closed circuit, that's another kind of circuit um, jargon. Um, so another way to put it is the current through the capacitor, you let them go to zero. And this uh, has to do with the fact that current through the capacitor is represented by time derivative of the amount of charge on the capacitor. So if the circuit has reached a steady state, then the amount of charge is no longer changing. So this derivative will be going to zero. That's why this is the asymptotic condition. You say, all right, no current is flowing through the capacitor. Uh, and that's what it means to treat it as an open circuit, as in part of the circuit that's not connected, so no current is flowing through. So what we are saying here is, okay, then no current flows through capacitor one, that's a zero and no current flows through capacitor two, that's a zero. Um, I see that junction there. So whatever current, so no current flows at all through this circuit. All right. Um, um, okay, we have to still answer these questions somehow. <laughs> so I hope we can answer them. So um, these actually do give you some information and uh, which is that um, you can always relate voltage change across a register uh, with the current uh, through them by Ohm's law. So this is what Ohm's law says. Ohm's law says the change of voltage across the register is the current times the resistance. And Ohm's law remains true. So let me write it down. True, even, or maybe especially, uh, when current is zero. It's an important thing to realize. So once you realize that, then what you realize here is that the voltage difference here is equal to zero. So the if we call this end, 
zero volt and call this end the plus 12 volt, then that plus 12 volt goes all the way here. This is a plus 12 volt. And the exact same thing applies to the other end here. So no current is flowing through this register, which means the voltage drop here is also zero again. So the zero volt end, it goes all the way to here, zero volt. So the voltage change across both capacitors, um, uh, uh, both capacitors is uh, 12 volts. The entire voltage of the battery. That's um, for this circuit, even though it looks kind of complicated, that's how it works out. <laughs> um, I guess it doesn't always have to be that. Like if uh, this was somehow arranged so that these two capacitors were in series, then there would be more work. But um, in this particular arrangement, they are kind of parallel, which is why they both have the full voltage of the battery. So, all right. <laughs> and so it asks what is the energy stored in each capacitor then, um, what you need to use there is the, the, the formula for uh, potential energy stored on a capacitor. And that formula, I always like to write it down in, or have it memorized in the three forms, which are potential energy of a capacitor is the charge times voltage. And there's this factor of one half, don't forget it. And uh, this can be written in two different ways by using the definition of capacitance. C is equal to Q over V or um, rewriting it, I guess Q is equal to CV and V is equal to Q over C. So using these, sub these to substitute it in for Q or V, you can either get one half uh, CV squared or one half uh, Q squared over C. In this question, since you're not being told any information about the charge, um, but you do have capacitance and you do have voltage. So this is the equation you want to use. So you plug in the numbers for one half C1 um, and you have the voltage 12 volts. So this is gonna be one half C1 times 12 volts, work out the numbers. And the second one is gonna be one half C2 times Oh, wait, squared, <laughs> 12 volts squared. So, so that's it. Uh, this question looks more complicated than it actually is, but it is important that you do have to know how to handle these asymptotic cases that in those, um, you know, after circuit, which is some steady state, you have to know to treat capacitors as open circuit, meaning current through the capacitor is zero and that constraint forces other simplifications in the circuit that'll hopefully help you, help you solve the circuit.